let's install Debian 11 as a workstation with a desktop. Now, I've already downloaded the Debian ISO image. I'm using KVM as my virtualization platform, and I've already created the virtual machine. So I'm going to double click on that and start the virtual machine, which should boot off of the ISO image now. We'll click play, and there we go. Here's our menu. We have a couple options. We can choose graphical install, which is point and click, or just install, which is all text-based. I'm gonna do graphical install just for giggles here, and let's go to full screen mode for our virtual machine. And so this installation will look very similar on other virtualization platforms, and it'll look very similar to an install to just a physical system as well. So let's get to it. We're gonna do graphical install. All right, and it says what language you wanna use. I'm gonna select English, but you can select whatever language you like. And we'll click continue here. Location for me is United States. Modify that as you see fit. We'll click continue. Keyboard that I'm using is American English. Modify that as you see fit and continue. And that's going to scan uh, for components, load additional stuff from the installation media and detect network hardware and try to configure the network automatically. It's going to attempt to get an IP address automatically from my virtualization platform, and it did. And at this point, it's ready for a host name. Now, your system may be faster or slower than mine, so, um, and also I'm speeding up the video as we go, so keep in mind that some of these steps may take a little bit longer for you. So host name, I'm gonna call this Debian-Client-11, just for fun. We'll click continue. Domain name, I'm not gonna use just yet. We'll click continue for that, but you could always add a domain name later. And then you need to set up users and passwords. First, we need to set the root password in Debian. So this is a little different than some other Linux distros where you would just set up an administrative user. Here we are actually setting up the root user. So you wanna make sure that you have a super complex and lengthy password for this. So I'm gonna add that in now and type it again to confirm and continue. Then it asks you to make a typical user account that you will use to actually log into the system. You only wanna use root to do administrative things. Our typical user will be our main user account that we work with. So I'm just gonna call this dpro and continue. That's my username, continue again. And now we need a password for that user account. Pick something complex and lengthy, type it again, and click continue. Then it's gonna ask you about your time zone. For me, I'm in Eastern, so I'm gonna select that and click continue. And we're gonna go through the disk partitioning setup. Now, this is where things get more complex. Depending on what you're installing Debian to, you need to really think about what you wanna do with your drives. So for example, if you have a server, you might have uh, a bunch of drives and you have to specify what sections of Linux you're gonna install where. But this is just a virtual machine installation just for testing. And so I'm just gonna go and use the entire drive and continue. And it sees that virtual drive that I've created already, which is 20 gigs in size. We'll click continue for that. And then it says, okay, where do you wanna have your partitions? Now, if you're doing a Linux installation on a server or a power workstation, quite often you would at least separate the home partition, which is good for restoring user accounts later on. Uh, at most, you would have separate slash home, slash var, and slash TMP partitions. But again, this is just a test virtual machine, so I'm gonna put everything in one partition and click continue. At that point, you can review what we have here, 
And that's going to make our primary partition, which is ext4, that's the uh, file system type, and it's going to be 20.4 gig, and also a swap partition, which is 1 gig. That's what I want. And so we want to finish partitioning and write changes to disk. We'll just click continue. Now, it's a good idea to take a screenshot of this just in case you need it later, in case you need to make changes. But that's only if you have a more complex setup for your hard drives. Ours is very simple. We'll click continue for this. And you have to specify again, yes, we definitely want to write the changes to the disk. This is a virtual disk. There's nothing on it. There's nothing there. But if you were doing this on a physical system, you, again, you'd want to recheck and be sure before you click yes, because that will then rewrite the partition tables and basically wipe the drive. So we'll click continue for yes. And that's going to install the base system. At this point, I'm just going to fast forward through. Okay, and it finished installing components. At this point, it's saying, okay, uh, do you have any more media that you need to scan, like another ISO image? We do not, so we're going to leave it as a default, no, and click continue. Now it's asking to configure the package manager. And package manager is where you get all your, your applications for Debian. And generally, you want to choose a package manager that's in your country. So I'm selecting United States and click continue. And by default in the United States, the best one is deb.debian.org. But you never know, you might want to check another one, especially if you're in a different area of the states or a different country. So we'll click continue for the default there. If you have a proxy, you'll need to enter the IP address or name of that proxy here and any other information about it. I do not, so I'm going to click continue and leave it blank. That's going to configure the package manager, which by the way is called APT, Advanced Packaging Tool. And so now we're in the selecting and installing software section. The first thing is the popularity contest or PopCon. Uh, you can choose to take part of this. Uh, take part in this if you want, and then statistics are sent to Debian. I'm going to select no for this, though, because this is just a test machine, and we'll click continue. And at this point, we need to select what software we want. The first thing is the desktop. Now, I want the GNOME desktop, so I'm going to leave this as Debian Desktop Environment and GNOME. But if you liked XFCE, which is lightweight, or KDE, which looks more like Windows, you could choose any of these. You have lots of options. Quite often, I want to SSH into these systems, so I'll oftentimes select that as well. But uh, this is just a client system, so I'm going to deselect it for now. And I am going to leave standard system utilities checkmarked. And we'll click Continue. That's going to go ahead and install over 1,300 packages altogether. So we're just going to fast forward through this. Now, this process could be several minutes on your system. It depends on the speed of your system. But after it installs all of those 1,300 and some odd packages, it'll get to the Grub Bootloader, which I do recommend you use. and. In this case, we're going, going to install the Grub bootloader to our primary drive. You might not do that with different types of physical systems, but for this virtual machine, that's fine. We'll click Continue for Yes. And then it says, okay, you need to specify the drive. Again, if you have a more complex system, you might have to choose from, from a variety of drives. But we only have one, so we'll select that and click Continue. That'll install the Grub Boot Loader. And it'll finish up the installation. And we'll fast forward through this as well. And there we go. The installation is complete. And we can boot into the new system. It says remove any installation media, but we were just using an ISO image. And most virtualization platforms will disconnect that ISO image automatically after the installation is finished. It'll recognize that and disconnect it. So we're just going to click continue. That'll finish everything up and reboot Debian.
There we go. Here's the splash screen for Debian Linux. Press enter. And that's it. We're at the login screen. I can connect as Dpro. Press enter here and type in the password for my user account. And we're in as Dpro at Debian. Awesome. And at this point, we can open programs like the terminal or whatever it is we need to work with. And you can see I'm connected as Dpro at my computer name, Debian-Client-11, which you could change if you want. All this can be changed. It's Linux. It's your world. You can do whatever you want with it. So that's about it. The install was successful, and it was a lot of fun. And I use Debian all the time in the field. In fact, my main workstation is Debian. So definitely check it out. And uh, contact me at my website or my Discord server if you have any questions or just want to say hi. That's it for this video.